I'm beginning to find confirmation to that one little aspect of William Lyne's story of Tesla's trimetal generator that I think is the most important one because everything else about Tesla's trimetal generator is nothing more than a very efficient unipolar generator. But once we start to add in the element of for every 200 pounds of iron added to the device, one horsepower output is increased. This is very significant, and I found a confirmation. Here's a YouTube video by this fellow by the name of uh, Brian Strom, S-T-R-O-H-M. That's the uh, name of his YouTube channel, spelled Brian with a Y, B-R-Y-A-N, S-T-R-O-H-M. <clears throat> and he has a video called The Unipolar Generator with Mag Vortex, comma, LLC by Brian Strom. He has a website called Mag Vortex. Uh, that would be Mag is M A G. It's all one word. M A G V is in Victor. O R T E C H S. Tex as in plural, short form of technologies. Um, Limited Liability Corporation LLC. <coughs> and oh darn, I lost my video. <laughs> well, here we'll just get the um, the other one. So I downloaded his video, and he mentions at around 2 minutes and 38 seconds into the video, an Adam Trumbly, so now we'll get Adam Trumbly, so you can see him. Uh, here we go, Adam Trumbly. <clears throat> Very wild, wildly, widely interviewed. And according to uh, Brian Strum, this fellow, he met this fellow at a conference back in 87, and this fellow has said that he had made a unipolar generator that put out 270% COP, coefficient of performance. So 100% energy cost into the system and 270% output, <clears throat> you know, and that's including the losses that would have undermined the output as it is. Um, and he claimed, Adam claimed that one of the main benefits to his design was the chassis. And now Brian questions that. He, he, he doubts that. So I, whoops. <laughs> so I sent a little message to uh, Brian Strom, letting him know that I think that William Lyne's story of quoting Tesla that you have to add 200 pounds of iron per horsepower that you expect to get out of this extra is true. That it does, the chassis, the iron encasement, it's very important that it be magnetically coupled to a very large body of iron held elsewhere outside the, the, the device. It's kind of an inverted or turned inside out um, iron cord coil of wire because instead of it being on the inside of the coil now it's on the outside and now because it's outside the coil of wire we can have as much iron as we like off into the infinite realm of space to expand this big body of iron uh, we're not limited to the confines of the coil which are of course of course are very confining because if you put in too much iron core it widens the the diameter of the inside diameter of the coil winding to the point that the coil winding doesn't exactly work very effectively anymore. So this way you get to put it outside the coil and be very efficient at increasing your, your iron to whatever degree you wish. <clears throat> so his unipolar, this fellow's unipolar design is not making use of all the, the uh, properties of Adam T Trumbly. Now, Adam Trumbly had g given his presentation of his device to the UN, to the Congress, to the Senate, and he put a had a gag order put placed on him because some of his citations were classified. In other words, the Navy was already using it. Now, we know that Operation Paperclip brought over this technology because Tes Tesla gave it to... Um, either Werner von Braun or Mr. Dort, or probably Werner von Braun, but Mr. Dort was working with Tesla, and his son, Mr. Dort's son, relayed this um, story to William Lyne. <clears throat> so, 
we know that Tesla had this technology, that the Nazis got it from Tesla, and in all likelihood we got it back from the Nazis. But this time, you know, they were paying attention to the Nazis because the Nazis almost won the war on, based on their technology alone, practically, and their motivation to make war. Um, well, we didn't have the technology at the time, so we were caught a little in surprise. So it was probably made classified because of the fact that, finally, the government was paying attention, our government. Um, but it's something that most people overlook, and it's, it's because of tornadoes. Well, both tornadoes and unipolar and homopolar generators exhibit this. When they start to waste energy, they create heat. And that energy, the electrical energy, gets converted into heat. Tornadoes do this, too. So, William Lyons thought the iron was to carry away the excess heat, but I think it's to prevent the buildup of heat by carting off the magnetic force to take it away. Now, Adam Trombley said something else very interesting. He said that if you get two counter-rotating disks, or no, excuse me, was that the way he put it? No, he said that his system, his device, the rotation, the, the disk was saturated with current. What that means is that no matter what you draw off in terms of your load, the disk still remains saturated. Its current level never drops. And that means also that the more current, in order for that to happen, the other thing he said happened was the more current you drew off, uh, the more faster <clears throat> the the disk spun to make up the difference. So it always remained. So the only thing that stayed the same was the saturation uh, of current of the disk, and it made up the difference by spinning faster when the load was increased. Well, this tells me that the magnetic sink sinkhole. Uh, magnetically coupled to the iron chassis of the device was adequately sized to handle the increased load. So there is a limit, obviously. There's always a limit in everything, in all the different factors. But if you have enough of a magnetic sink, magnetizable substance, let's say iron, but there are other substances that are more, much more highly magnetizable than iron, then you could accommodate a greater load and you might want to scale up your device as well. So this is, Adam Trombley verifies two aspects, but a more detailed aspect, and that is saturation of current. I didn't know that that's what's, there's actually a, a concept. Um, besides carting off the iron, the consequence is saturation of current within the disk. And these two become more or less stable components or factors of the equation while the load can vary, you know, within certain parameters. Um, and this, of course, is all over unity, but it's your window of over unity that you can get away with based on the all the various parameters of the device itself and the, and the load characteristics as well. So his uh, Adam Trumbly's device was seized by the FBI, and uh, he had a gag order put on him not to talk about his citation that, or he, s certain features of his device that ha are already being used by the Navy, which makes, you know, no fault of Adam. He just stumbled across something on his own as an independent researcher. He probably didn't know about the Navy, uh, but. You know, the Navy can claim uh, what we uh, do in the private sector. Yes, but we can talk about it until somebody puts a gag order on us. So that's why I talk about it, because I think it's very significant, and here is one instance that verifies that it is. Now, he, Adam Trumbly doesn't talk about magnetism when he talked about his chassis, and that's probably where Brian Strom fell apart and stumbled all over himself, not understanding what was going on. Because, you know, Adam Trumbly had a gag order, so he probably couldn't share everything. And so Brian didn't get it because he doesn't know about William Lyons' story. So that's why I sent him an email. Actually, it was an email, not a private message, because he does have a website. He's, 
his day job is construction, you know, he remodels homes. So he does have a work workaday website that uh, exhibits his, you know, address, his phone number, you know, all that stuff. But uh, basically I thought he should know about William Lyne because, you know, nobody wants to, to give much credence to William Lyne's story, but I do because my friend verifies it that we can actually make a solid state unipolar generator that has all the characteristics of Tesla's trimetal or special generator. It just becomes now solid state because we've got components Tesla did not have access to. And it was just 10 years after Tesla shared this technology with uh, the Germans fully so that they could have it in operation fully for their uh, U-boats that we had only 10 years later, we had crystal oscillators, quartz crystal oscillators, and I think that's the key of making this, turning this into a solid state device. Anywho, that's about what I have to say.